Eagles fans, if you got Packers fans, you and them better start studying Portuguese. We find out who the Eagles are taking on down in Brazil, plus who's on the bubble in the first round. All that and more coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome on into another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. Now going on seven years with the duo of your host, myself, Gino Camilleri, your scouting director here at LOE, and my co-host, Lou DiBiase. I'll be writing solo for you on today's episode, always brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning guaranteed bet. That's $150, no matter what, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And to get started on today's episode, I got into my Pepe Silvia mode, and I use this reference a lot if you've listened to this show at all over the past seven years. Pepe Silvia is Charlie Day's fake character as a detective on an episode of Always Sunny, and there is a famous meme slash gif where he is at a bulletin board, and it just has pictures and red arrows pointing it all over the place trying to figure out whatever he was figuring out in that episode. But I turned into Pepe Silvia today to try and figure out how the first round was going to play out. How is this thing exactly going to look come two weeks from now, come 15 days from now, come 15 days from now, what happens then? That's the NFL draft. Oh, if you're not subscribed to the Lockdown Eagles podcast yet, I highly suggest you do because we will be going live for that episode as we do each episode. And every year we'll be going live for almost four hours. But So what I did when I put my Pepe Silvia hat on, I had a little assistance from Dane Brugler. Hats off to him. Today he released the beast. He helped fill in the blanks on some of those guys who might be locks for the first round and might be closer to the second round. Because as I go through this exercise, you're going to see there were some things that I couldn't fill in and I couldn't figure out. So to get started, How did I do this? So I went to FanDuel. I went to their props section. And in their props section, under NFL Draft, you can look at things like, what is the order of the first three picks? Who is going to be the first tight end off the board? Who is most likely to draft Bo Nix, as I mentioned prior? So as I went through how I did this, I started with the top 10. I took how the top 10 should play out according to FanDuel. It looks like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Joe Alt, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, and Brock Bowers would round out the top 10. You're probably saying, Gino, how how does this play out? Well, we know that Caleb Williams is going to go number one. Washington, their favorite to go and pick a quarterback. Jaden Daniels is also the favorite to be the second player off the board. New England is favorite to go quarterback. Drake May is the favorite to be the third player off the board. And then you get to Arizona. Arizona and Minnesota didn't have odds on who is the favorite in terms of position to be the pick. So I had to kind of fill in the blanks a little bit. Well, the player to be the number four pick And the favorite to be the number one wide receiver was Marvin Harrison Jr. So there we go. We're putting the puzzle together a little bit. Then we move on to the Chargers. Malik Neighbors. He was favorite to be the second wide receiver off the board. The Chargers are favored to get a wide receiver. So you see how this exercise kind of goes. If a team is favored to pick a position, and especially in the top 10 where you're getting a lot of information in terms of what Vegas knows, you can really start to tie these pieces together. So let's get to the Jets, for example, because they were favorited to pick an offensive lineman. But just below that, 
Offensive line was plus, I believe, 160. But Brock Bowers, to pick a tight end, was plus 200. And Brock Bowers was also plus 115 to be a top 10 pick. He was plus 250 to be the 10th pick overall. And the New York Giants were the second favorite team to land Brock Bowers. See, I'm putting all these pieces together. I might sound crazy to you. I might sound crazy, but this is what my brain does. I try to figure this all out. So as we continue to move along, Minnesota, as I said, they didn't have any favorites in terms of what position. But J.J. McCarthy, who was the team that was favorited to get him? The Minnesota Vikings. Who was the team that's favorited to get Bo Nix at the next pick? Where Denver, their selection is favorited to be a quarterback. Well, Bo Nix is going to end up there if you're just following the numbers. I'm not saying this is for sure. If I could say that, I would be bankrupting casinos in Vegas. I say this story all the time, but we are just looking at the information responsibly. So as we continue to churn along, Las Vegas, I kind of had to take a little bit of a stretch here. Quarterback was the third favorite for them, but Michael Penix, all of the other prop bets, kind of tied Vegas to them like he was plus 380 to be drafted to Vegas and so on and so forth so I continue to go down the list New Orleans ends up with Tyrese Fuaga who's the second offensive lineman favorited to be off the board and then Quinion Mitchell to Indianapolis who's favorited to draft a cornerback Quinion is the favorite to be the number one cornerback off the board then you go to Seattle's pick. They're favorited to draft an offensive lineman. Olufushanu is the next guy up. Same story with Jacksonville and Terry and Arnold. Same story with Cincy and J.C. Latham. Same thing with the Rams and Laiuatu Latu. Then Pittsburgh with Troy Fautanu. Then Miami with the Marius Mims. That sound, almost sounded like I was doing a rap there. And then this thing dies, unfortunately. Because the Eagles, Cowboys, Packers, Ravens and Niners all still are left to be favorited to select an offensive lineman. Though FanDuel didn't have any other offensive lineman outside of the six that were mentioned. After Philadelphia, Minnesota would then select Brian Thomas Jr. I kind of put the pieces together there. Brian Thomas was the next wide receiver up. Minnesota, they draft a quarterback, tie it all together. Don't know what Dallas is going to do. Green Bay in terms of offensive line. Tampa Bay is a favorite to go defensive line, but there's not really any prospects that were tied to them on the FanDuel props. Arizona, could they go wide receiver with the quarterback there in Kyler Murray who could use some help there? Absolutely. Hollywood Brown is no longer there. Buffalo, this one kind of makes a lot of sense because they're favorited at minus 240 to get a wide receiver. And Xavier Worthy is favorited to land in Buffalo. They're plus 400 to draft him. Makes a lot, a lot of sense that those two tie together. The Lions, Cooper DeGene, the third quarterback off the board. The Lions are at plus 135 to draft a corner. And that was the last guy that we could kind of tie via all of these props. So how did I fill in the blanks? Well, I took Dane Brugler's The Beast. And I took the rest of the information from FanDuel and I tied this thing together the best I could. Who slipped into the first round? Who fell into the second round bubble? Stick with me here on this edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. As we roll along, this episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is the only place to bet every single game. Not only is it the number one sports book in all of America, but they're the official sports book of the Lockdown Podcast Network, and the only place where we are wagering responsibly, and that is over at FanDuel here at LOE. Right now, new customers, all our everydayers, get 150 bucks back. In bonus bets, guaranteed that's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Rolling along here on this Wednesday edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. I'm your host, Gino Camilleri, and we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team each and every day. And if you love what we're doing here at the Locked On Podcast Network, and you're not watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV at all anymore because you had to turn down the volume, you're sick of all the shouting, Make the switch full-time to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for your everyday needs to bring you the biggest story without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, each and every day, makes you are Make sure you are subscribing to keep the pod alive. And as we roll along, I first started talking about in that segment, how is this first round going to play out? If you kind of clear away the sand and follow the 30 visits and see who teams talk to at the combine and see what positions they've been working out, you you can kind of get a very good sense of how things should play out in the NFL draft. We know at the end of the day, it is the NFL, the greatest reality television that is unscripted on planet Earth. And we don't know when Seattle comes up and takes a Jordan Brooks or an LJ Collier and throws this whole thing for a loop or the New York Giants go out there and select Daniel Jones. We don't know. But what I do know is Vegas makes a lot of money and they usually have to be right on their calculations. So that's why I tried to follow the money to hopefully make us some money. And then the bread comes kind of trailed out, right? So at the end of that first segment, I'm talking that what we had six teams that still needed an offensive lineman, two teams that still needed a wide receiver, one team that still needed a defensive lineman. Actually, it's five teams that needed offensive linemen. So how did I put this together? How did I, how did I fill this out? And how did I end up with the guys that might slip out of the first round? Well, as I said, Dane Brugler, big shout out. One of the most respected guys in the NFL draft community draft Twitter. He puts out the best draft guide each and every year. The beast over at the athletic came out today. Perfect timing. A little bit more information to add to this, to this trail. So I started to pick up some more breadcrumbs. So I started to say, how can I look at this? Okay, well, let's go to offensive line. Let's see who Dane has graded out as a first, first slash second, potentially a second round prospect. Let's see what he has to say. What is his opinion? He knows his stuff. He's pretty well tied to the league. Let's see if we can kind of continue down this trail and hopefully get out of this forest that Hansel and Gretel let us down. So let's get to the offensive line. This is the big one. This is the position where there's still five teams. Philadelphia, go figure. Dallas, Green Bay. Baltimore, San Francisco, that all could use offensive linemen. Those six that were favored to go off the board in order over at FanDuel, I think a lot of us would suspect that as well. Then there gets into the second tier. So what did Dane Brugler have to say? Well, he says the next guy up is Graham Barton. Would Lou love to see the Eagles take Graham Barton? Absolutely not. But if you're saying the only other first round graded offensive lineman on the board is Graham Barton, and that's the Eagles favorite position that they would go and get, that's how we're tying this thing together. And and this is where things start to go for a loop, because if you're looking at the board right now, you're saying, what, why would they, why would they take Graham Barton out of all people when Nate Wiggins and Kool-Aid McKinstry are still on the board? You can make the argument for that. And heck, Byron Murphy is still on the board. Well. Byron Murphy, if you follow along on FanDuel, he's one of the guys who's favorited to be a pick at number 10, and he's also favorited to be a top 10 selection overall. At pick number 9, that is. So I gave him to the one team that needs a defensive lineman, being Tampa Bay. Does he fall to 25? Probably not, but I wanted to continue to fill in the blanks there. So Graham Barton, do the Eagles take him? Yeah, I guess so. Then who's up next? As I said, Brian Thomas was taken by Minnesota. Dallas, who are they going to get? Well, the next three guys up. Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma, Jordan Morgan out of Arizona, and Jackson Powers Johnson. 
Those are the next three grades in terms of first slash second round grades on players that Dane Brugler has. So those guys go off the board. Baltimore, they still have to go and get a guy as well. San Francisco still has to get a guy as well. These offensive linemen are flying off the board. And just because these are the grades that Dane Brugler has and the pieces that I'm putting together doesn't mean that's how teams are going to view it. And that's why this part is so difficult because two teams still need wide receivers. And you're sitting there and saying, Troy Franklin, A.D. Mitchell, Lad McConkey, Keon Coleman, all those guys are at plus 1,000 to be the next wide receiver off the board. But how many of them are truly first or second round talents? Well, Dame Brugler sees Lad and A.D. Mitchell right on that cusp. But do they fall into that first round? That's why it's so difficult, this part of the draft. Because if this board plays out how it is, and let's say Byron Murphy falls off in that equation and he's off the board when the Eagles pick, you're probably saying all the blue chippers that you wanted coming into that portion of the draft are gone. I mean, good thing you're not like the Buffalo Bills. We're probably going to have to overdraft a wide receiver at some point because you're not going to land one of the top guys. But who's on the bubble? Who makes it in? If I had to guess, it's offensive linemen. Put your money on offensive line. Put your money on guys like Zach Frazier, the center out of West Virginia, West Virginia, Kingsley, Kingsley Suamatia, the tackle out of BYU, Cooper Beebe, the interior offensive lineman who can move in and out, out of Kansas State. Put it on the guys like Chop Robinson and Johnny Newton, who are the next guys favorited to be off the board, or Marshawn Nealon, who has a first or second round grade, according to Dame Brugler. But guys like TJ Tampa, Mike Sainrestrill, Ennis Rakestraw, guys that are on that cusp, do teams that need cornerbacks jump up and go get that guy? Or do they say, heck, only one tight end's been taken, no running backs have been taken, barely any interior defensive linemen have been taken, uh, no linebackers have been taken, no safeties have been taken. Am I going to take the best player off the board? Best player available versus drafting for need. I'm glad I don't make those decisions because I'm stuck. Like, what? How do you pick? How do you pick for those teams? What's the difference between making Lad McConkey a first round pick and a second round pick by two selections? Out of my pay grade, out of my pay grade, but I try to put the pieces together as much as possible. If I had to say what three positions are going to have the most guys picked, offensive line by a long stretch, quarterback, I believe there's going to be six guys taken. And then probably wide receiver. So if you're looking at that, yeah, the Eagles could take an offensive lineman, right? They don't need a quarterback. They don't need a wide receiver. Look at how many good positions are out there. Good players that are top players at their position. The Eagles could realistically trade back six, seven spots and draft Edger and Cooper as a first round linebacker, let's say. I'm just saying, for example. But at the end of the day, follow the money and do the research. I don't know as much as you do. I just try to put the pieces together. Follow the money at Vegas. And at the same time, if you're good at guessing the draft, this is something that you should get it on. It's bracket season. Brackets are done. Go over to FanDuel. Get in on the action. I highly recommend it. And there's going to be some action down in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's going to be jam-packed with green jerseys. Maybe not in the stadium, though. That's what we're going to talk about here to finish up this episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. All right, everyone, finishing up this Wednesday edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Gino Camilleri here to finish up the show. And we got some big news today, folks. Not only did we find out the opponent that the Eagles will be taking on in Brazil, but I'm a little upset that Lou DiBiase, my co-host, isn't here to take this in. We also figured out that the NFL is going to allow teams to not have just one, not just two, but three helmets this season. And that comes in at a pretty unexpected time. But at the same time, if you put the pieces together, it all makes sense. Because we also found out today 
that the Green Bay Packers, the other rumored team outside of the Cleveland Browns, are actually going to be the team that the Eagles take on down in Sao Paulo. And why that's interesting is because this game is taking place in Corinthian Stadium. The football team that plays inside Corinthian Stadium, and soccer for those who don't call it football, I'm a big footy fan, shout out Man City. Their rival, Palmeiras, wear green. And they don't allow teams to wear green inside their stadium. Well, I don't know the last time the Corinthians uh, front office looked at either of the Green Bay Packers or the Philadelphia Eagles or the Brazilian national team jersey, but they're all green. So the, all of these things are coming out and we, we hear the news about the helmet and two teams that are going to be wearing green are playing in a stadium that doesn't allow teams to wear green. Well, maybe just maybe, folks. The Eagles come out week one. And they either go black on black, black helmets, black uniforms, or our official uniform conciliary, Lou DiBiase, he hinted at this a couple times. What if they go to the all-white throwbacks? Whoo! And they go white on white. I don't know what Green Bay would wear, but they could figure it out. But man, that would look clean. I'm ultimately thinking that it's going to be black on black for the Philadelphia Eagles. Green Bay is going to wear their yellow helmets with the white jerseys. Tickets haven't gone on sale yet. But the moment we found this out, me and the wife were very excited that they're going to be taking on the Packers. One of my very best friends, he was in my wedding. He's a Packers fan. Some of my cousins are Packers fans. This would be a Camillary family trip to get down to Brazil. If you want to get down there, no free ads, but good friends of people around Philadelphia, fans of Philly, they are putting together a trip package. You can go and look into that. I say if you have the opportunity, go see a game abroad. I have a bunch of friends and relatives back home in western New York that went to London for the Buffalo Bills game last year. Did it stretch their pockets a little thin? Absolutely. But did they say it was a game that they will always remember? 100%. Are some people a little upset that they're not going to take in a week one home game at Lincoln Financial Field in prime time against a conference opponent? Absolutely. But the writing was on the wall when the NFL started this international series years ago. Now you see teams being assigned different territories that they are supposed to engage in when it comes to their market and growing the game across the globe. And all of a the sudden they had a 17th game. Some years you have a ninth home game. Some years you don't have that ninth home game. Well, guess what? If you have a ninth home game, you're probably not playing that ninth home game at home. You're more than likely going to be playing that on the road. And I think this is how the NFL is ultimately going to circumvent the idea of having to put a team overseas in London that they have talked about or hack in Germany and bring back the NFL Europe idea. But at the end of the day, they want to make money. So if you're not going to go and buy a Jersey, let's say, and you're not going to spend money to go see a game at Lincoln financial field and you haven't gotten out of the house in a while, boy, Brazil in the middle of September, I believe, yeah, so they're in the Southern Hemisphere. So at that time, we would just be coming off of summer. So at that time, they would just be finishing up winter. So I'm assuming being that close to the equator that the weather is nice. But I'm not a meteorologist. I really don't know. But I'm excited. Everybody else should be excited. It's going to be a nationally televised game on Peacock. Everybody in Philadelphia, don't worry. It will be streamed live, local, in the market. And I'm so jealous of all of you that you just get that on your local CBS or Fox channel. I had to grow up and, hey, if I got two Eagles games a year on my local television in Rochester, I was lucky. But now that I don't live under the household of my mom, who would never get the NFL ticket for us, I've had the NFL ticket and been lucky enough to watch all the Eagles games. And hopefully I could take in an Eagles game with some everydayers down in Brazil. Maybe dreams will come true. We get to take in a game as they take on the Packers down in Brazil with potentially a new helmet, potentially a new uniform altogether. Stay tuned. We'll find out. The NFL is a 365-day news cycle. Who thought on 
April 10th, 15 days before the draft was going to kick off, that we got some exciting bits of news that we didn't think we were going to get. The Eagles, they will be taking on the Green Bay Packers down in Brazil. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Locked On Eagles podcast and tuning in each and every day, thankfully. Subscribe to keep the pot alive. That is the motto. It's how we bring home the bacon. It's how I keep the wife happy. And it's how we're able to bring this show to all of our everydayers, the people that keep this thing running. Thank you to the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team, each and every day. Check out all of the other Locked On Podcast shows. And if you don't just want to listen to the Locked On Podcast shows and you want to watch along, Make sure you check out the first ever national sports 24 7 stream, streaming channel on YouTube and now available on Amazon Fire TV. Hey, did I mention it's free as well on the Fire TV channels app? Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24 7, literally at any time, wherever you are on the globe. Go to the YouTube channel. Local experts like myself from Locked On are there covering all the local and national shows. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. You can also find us there as well. Find us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you're listening along, liking, subscribing, commenting. Make sure you check us out on Twitter at GC24 underscore football at DBRCLOE for my co-host. Subscribe to the main page at Locked On Birds. We will be back talking more draft stuff. Of course, we are spamming the radio waves with the draft. It's the big bell in town. It's the big show coming up. But until then, as always, I'm Gino Camilleri signing off. Fly, Eagles, fly.